Companies are pumping the brakes on public debuts, with the number of IPOs in the U.S. plunging by 75% in the first half of this year compared to last year, according to new data from EY. Joining us now to break down the latest in the IPO space is EY America's IPO leader, Rachel Gehring. Rachel, good to see you here this morning. Have we reached a bottom yet? No, I, I don't know that we've reached a bottom, but we are certainly in a wait and see period. Uh, companies are pausing, taking um, taking stock of just what's happening across the broader market and, and navigating through the choppy waters of rising interest rates, inflation and recessionary fears, ongoing geopolitical st instability, and supply chain shortages, workforce shortages, high volatility, and then we can't forget the performance um, of the 2021 IPO class. That certainly makes it difficult. They're down, last numbers I saw, uh, more than 45% trailing the broader market. So that makes it uh, a struggle for new entrants. Rachel, in a past life, I remember sitting way, sitting through way too many of these pitch meetings for companies that were looking to go public, trying to figure out the best opportunity for them to get out the door and into the public markets. But as of right now, if there's anything that these companies are citing in terms of the, the biggest fears that they have and how much further they may push out their timeline, what are you hearing from them? You know, as I mentioned, they're, they're in a wait and see uh, navigating through this. Um, right now, companies are taking this time to be inward focused, looking and challenging their business, really shoring up uh, key functions um, in that public company readiness arena, forecasting abilities and, and so forth, and waiting it out. I think right now, investors are focused on both growth and profitability, or at least a clear path to profitability. So I see in the last half of this year and into 23, companies that can convey both growth and profitability as opposed to growth at all costs that we saw in 2021. Um, and Rachel, as you mentioned, the performance has been maybe not uniformly terrible, but pre pretty uniformly terrible of the companies that came public last year. Has the timing of some of those IPOs, do you think it will ultimately actually torpedo their businesses because of their you know, liquidity accessibility, for example. Do, in other words, is the timing of a company's IPO, can it ultimately make or break the business? You know, I think there's a lot of um, opportunities for company to explore um, access to capital. Certainly IPOs um, can be used as a funding mechanism and that's what's going to really dictate when companies ultimately do or don't come to the market based on you know, their funding needs, liquidity, and then overall just um, objectives that they have. So there, there's options out there in the market for them, both on the private side and then the public side. And I think companies are carefully just evaluating all of those options they have, and then what's the right timing for them. Private companies, Rachel, too, their valuations have been hammered, and now so many of them are laying uh, employees off, just given the uncertainty. When they ultimately do come to market at some point, what do these companies look like? I think right now what's going to uh, launch or what the entrants that we're going to see first, again, are those um, companies probably more in the defensive sectors, the consumer staples and so forth. And again, both growth and profitability, um, I think, are going to be the companies that we see coming to market um, most earlier, driving that investor focus. And hopefully we, we continue to see an uptick from there. The ways in which companies have gone public, I mean, whether it be the traditional IPO, whether it be a direct listing, whether it be uh, part of a de-SPAC process, specifically on the SPAC side, we've seen so many of those businesses, also those that have made it into the public markets thus far, they've also faltered over the course of this year. Does that put a significant dampener on this potential type of route to go public? And is the SPAC, is that de-SPAC process, is that kind of diminished or even dead at this point? I wouldn't say that it's dead. It is certainly diminished, but you know we have over 500 active SPACs right now looking for a transactable target. Will all of those deals uh, get done? Probably not, but certainly the performance um, of those that went in 2021 is dampening the market right now. Um, what's also impacting SPACs, unlike traditional IPOs, is the uncertainty around regulation. Uh, the proposed rules from the SEC are still there. Both SPAC sponsors, underwriters, and other parties to the transactions are navigating through that and, and where will that land? That's also impacting the decrease in SPAC activity that we're seeing right now. 
And as they navigate through that, I think they're going to adapt and adjust. I don't know that SPACs are going to go away. Are we going to see the same numbers that we saw in 2021? Probably not. Do you expect that for some of the exchanges that certainly do rely on their listings revenue? We just saw NASDAQ report today and their revenue did jump 6% to $893 million, but they saw a rise in a different part of the business kind of outside of some of the listing services that, that move forward. And so ultimately for the companies who are paying a lot of these fees, might we be seeing and do for another restructuring even of the fees that they're paying to have their outstanding shares listed? Yeah, potentially that that's something that certainly can can occur. But right now we're focused on just really helping companies evaluate, you know, the, the their path to going public, how they would go public, and really that that public company readiness, making sure that they are thinking through and, and prepared for the demands of being public, we always recommend companies, you got to operate like a public company before being public. And so we're finding a lot of our clients are taking this time right now, really focused on that. Rachel, thanks so much. Rachel Gehring, uh, EY America's IPO leader, digging into what's been a sluggish IPO market. Appreciate it.